Okay, so let's, let's think about what, what you do when you first walk into the examination. You're a bit stressed, you've done all your study, but you know, you're gonna sit down at your exam desk and they're gonna say to you at the beginning, you've got five minutes reading time. What do you do in that five minute reading time is really important. You can get yourself flustered or you can have, try and read the whole paper, but if you've ever seen a physics paper, I hope you have, they're about 20 pages thick. So you're not gonna be able to actually read the whole paper in that five minute reading time. Having a particular strategy can calm you down and get you ready for that exam. Here's one that I want you to try. Maybe you can think about doing it in your trial if you have, haven't, if you've done your trial already, too bad, do it in your HSC. Don't try and read the whole paper. Just look at the front page, have a look at the instructions, flick through each of the pages, maybe look at the diagrams because the diagrams will tell you something about each of the questions. Go straight to your one option that you're going to do and then read that option really carefully all the way through so you've seen the whole 25 marks. Fold the corner down on the page of your option so you can find it quicker at the end when you get to it. Even if you go back to the multiple choice and start like most people, your option is going to have that dog ear on it so you can go and find that question or those series of questions really quickly. Once you've done that and they say start, you'll be ready. You might have read your option, you might even go back and start the multiple choice, but you cannot read the whole paper in five minutes. So having that one little strategy will really help you start the paper in a nice settled mode so that you're ready to attack the exam and maximise your marks. Okay, one of the things that I, I would really like to mention is that the paper is three hours long. It's pretty much designed to be done by most students in two and a half hours. So you should have at least half an hour at the end of the paper designed, specifically designed for you to check your paper and make sure that you get more marks. There's a few things that you should do in that half an hour. One of them is not leave. Right? Don't get up and leave. If something comes into your head, you cannot go back in and fix it up. So stay there. Even if you put your head on the table and they have to wake you up at the end of the day and say, hey, it's time to go home, stay there. All right? But in that half an hour, assuming that you're awake and that you're really trying to get more marks, one thing that you can do is to check your calculations and make sure that they've all been put in in system international units, so SI units. That's going to make a big difference. Show you're working. If you haven't shown enough working, put some working in there. If there's a question you want to add some more information in, write the extra information in between your lines. Ask for an extra book if you want to. Not a problem. We will mark everything you write. For your extended answer questions, your teachers have probably told you to highlight the key words, the verbs, the main parts of the sentence, and then go and write your answer. That's a really good thing to do when you're writing your answer and you're planning your answer. But when you're checking your answer, don't just read the question again. As you read your question, look for places where you have actually done what you meant to do. So we call it backward mapping. So in this particular question which says, assess the impact of transformers on, your, on society, you need to have given a judgment. Probably the judgment will come at the end. It might come at the beginning, but have you given a judgment? So f when you read your answer, find where is my judgment and then tick off just above where you've highlighted judgment perhaps, tick off, put a little tick there to say, I've done that, I've done my judgment. It says, where's your evidence for your judgment? So go through and find, have I got evidence? Tick the thing that says evidence, okay? So yeah, here's my evidence. You want to give some examples of impacts on society. So where are those impacts in your answer? Look for them. And of course, you have to give some specific evidence of a range of different things, not just one area of society, but maybe two or three different areas of society. If you can backward map your answer to the question and put little ticks over everything, you'll probably get full marks. Your answer too doesn't have to be in prose, it can be in dot points. So if I show you an answer that I wrote to that particular question, you see that the use of transformers to step up and step down voltages is not a bad way to start because you're telling the examiners that you know something about transformers. We talk about a hierarchy of verbs when we talk about big verbs like assess. It's good to start with descriptions and explanations and, and examples so that when you make your judgement, you've got all of those things as, as background to your judgement and you're more likely to get full marks. So right down the bottom here you can say a word that thus is a really good powerful word when you're making a judgement. Thus transformers have had a huge impact. There's a judgement straight away but it's based on some evidence that you can see in this answer. What we're talking about is a concept called backward mapping. I'll just say that word again, backward mapping. I don't want you to draw lines on your answer like we've got here but what we're saying is find areas in your answer that backward map to the question and you can be more confident that you'll get full marks. If you don't find stuff there that backward maps to those words, 
write more in. That's what that time's for, so you can get more marks. Okay, not necessarily in the same order that, that we've spoken about, but I, I think it's worth saying, here's, here are the suggestions that I'm trying to have for you in preparing yourself for the exam to get as many marks as you possibly can. Firstly, it's physics, so let's learn our formulas, okay? Make sure you learn your formulas. Think about the idea of study cards, they will really help you. Make vocab lists. When I make, get my students to make vocab lists, I open a Word document, a new Word document I open the syllabus, and I just cut and paste the key terms across. If you do that, you'll end up with two pages of key terms from preliminary right through to the HSC. So you won't, you'll, if you know all of those key terms, you'll be able to be answering the questions in the HSC better because you'll understand the questions. Certainly make summaries. Whatever those format of those summaries are, the briefer you can get them, the more often you can look at them and the less time it takes to look at them. If it takes you a small amount of time to remember all of your work, then you can look at those summaries more often and you won't forget it so that when you go into the exam, your content will be snappy. Make sure you study your practical work. If you have a look at column three in the syllabus, all the dot points for the practical work are there and they're all mandatory. So you can get a question on any one of those. And some of the questions that they can ask are things about reliability, um, validity, even safety. So you need to know those things for each one of your pracs so that you can be fairly savvy. That can be on your summary sheet and it should be. Of course, you need to do a self-check against the 9.1 um, skills table in the syllabus because each one of those is also fair game. It's not too bad an idea to have a look at the content and the context statements for each of the course too because the examiners will look in there for certainly some of the bigger questions that are worth maybe four or five or six marks. Also, please make sure you go to the Board of Studies website. They, have, they write the papers, they do all the marking. They've put a whole lot of uh, resources up there for you to use in preparing for your exams. Things like the HSC syllabuses, that's not a bad start. Have a look at it if you haven't got it already. Um, download it. Past exam papers are there, so you can have a look at what some of the past papers are like. Use your summaries to practice those past papers. Don't do a past paper and fail it. Do a past paper with your summary open and your formula sheets and all your cards and practice getting it right. Each time you practice getting it right, you'll do better and of course you'll be more prepared for the exam. The marking guidelines, um, notes from the marking centre, standards packages, glossaries of key terms, all of these things are resources that the Board of Studies puts up there for you. Doesn't take much time to go there and it's free. So in preparing for your exam, good luck and don't forget you're maximising your marks. Music